Hi, this is Faye, and I just want to talk to insurance professionals for a moment. What I want to talk to you about is uh, captive versus independent. And some something that you should consider if you're thinking of changing from captive to independent. First of all, let's let's be clear on what captive means. Captive means that you, you're either an employee of a carrier, you can be an employee of a uh, call center, you could be an employee of an FMO, you might be an employee of an IMO, or any other organization who actually gives you an exclusive arrangement or you have an exclusive arrangement with them that you will only offer or sell the products that they tell you to. So then you're in a captive situation. You're captive also even if you are receiving a 1099 and you're receiving an hourly rate as an employee plus bonuses or as a 1099, you're receiving X amount of dollars per sale. You work the hours that you want to work. The difference there is the employee-employer relationship. So there is no relationship if you're choosing the hours that you're working, but you are still only able contractually to offer the products that that particular entity or organization that you work for ask you to sell, then you are captive. That's a captive position. Understand clearly what the captive position is. Now with the captive position, you are most often provided inbound calls. You are not required to do lead generation. The lead generation is done for you all of that is considered in the compensation that you're going to receive. And that's a good way to make a living. That's an excellent way to work if this is the way that you choose to work. That's why you have choices. You can be either captive or you can be independent. When you're a captive and you're selling those products that the person, the, the organization, that has hired you or who has brought you in to make the sale, you're selling only the products that they're offering. You're required to sell only those products. You cannot contract with someone else at the same time to sell other similar products. You're captive. Now, the upside is whatever that contract is, if it fits your lifestyle and if it's, and it makes you make the goals that you have for your financial future, that's the way you should be. You should be working in that captive situation. There is some volatility at the end of Medicare enrollment periods because of, uh, the, the lock-in period not being as lucrative as far as Medicare sales go as OEP and AEP. So you have to recognize all of that while you're working. And if you're making good money during AEP and OEP, set your financial goals to stretch your income for the year. And perhaps you could take the summer off. That's fine too. Whatever works best for you so that you're not strapped and you're not in a position where you are now up against the wall and you can't pay your rent. Now let's look at the independent side. Now, one, one other thing. As a captive individual and you're selling health insurance or Medicare products, the entity that you're contracting with will probably license you in many states. You will definitely be licensed in more than one state because the calls will come in from various states. 
So the licensing is put up for you by the organization. You may be licensed in 50 states. There's a cost for that. So now looking at the independent side, and this is why I wanted to bring this up. When you start to work independent, you can also choose to work multiple states. But remember now, the cost of licensing in those states is an expense that is you can use as a part of building your business. So it is a tax, a tax deductible expense, but you're going to have to pay that. So I want you to understand when you become independent, Yes, you're going to get the full payment from the carriers for whichever product you're selling. And yes, those customers belong to you. So you're able to move those customers, however, if it's best for them, and you're not uh, set in any one carrier or two carriers or whatever that you had as a captive agent. So as an independent agent, now you have freedom, you're a broker, you have more carriers, you have more choices for your customer, the customer belongs to you. So there's an upside and a downside to both of these ways of making a living. People don't talk about this much, and I just thought it was time that somebody tells you that yes, there are some things that you need to look for. There are some things that you want to look for when you're going to become independent. And it's not something that you would jump into with both feet without any backup finances. Definitely you need some money to pay your bills until you're able to get your business, your own lucrative business running. Please don't misunderstand me. This business can be lucrative either way. I have nothing against call centers. I have nothing against captive. I have been a captive for most of the 20 years that I've worked in this business. And believe me, it was lucrative. So you can be and you can have the kind of business that you would want to have. Either way, if you want to know what fits you best, then I would suggest that you give me a call, set an appointment at my Calendly link that will be shown here so that you are able to know what it is that best fits your needs. You're the one that will need to make the decision. You're the one who will need to actually know what's better for you and once you know what's better for you, you'll be comfortable doing it. So that way, you can be the best that you can be either way, captive or independent. This is Faye. Thank you so much, but make sure that you know all the considerations.